Imagine that you just graduated university with a mechanical engineering degree and racked up $200,000 in debt over four years, but now you can't seem to get a job and just get rejected over and over again. You're so desperate that you apply to become an Uber driver. You originally studied engineering for the hefty paychecks and job security, and all the hard work you put in to get good grades seems pointless. The reason is you forgot to do an internship. Now, nobody will remind or force you to do an internship in university, but it's the first thing that employers look at in fresh engineering graduates, and it's also the key to landing full-time jobs once you graduate at some pretty cool companies like Apple, Tesla, SpaceX, and Boeing. That's just the way it is these days. Unfortunately, just studying and doing schoolwork won't help you get internships, so you need to focus more on areas outside of the classroom. During my time, time in university, I managed to get four internship offers and in this video, I'll be breaking down an effective step-by-step -step strategy for you to get internships even if you have zero experience. Now let's assume you're in your first year of university and your major is mechanical engineering. To apply to internships, you need a well-written resume, but you can't really put anything on it just yet because you haven't completed any classes and have zero experience relevant to mechanical engineering. So the the first step you need to do is review as many job descriptions on LinkedIn and company job portals to figure out three things. Number one is what kind of job is a good fit for you? Number two is what skills do these jobs require? And number three is how can you build these skills? For example, ask yourself if you're more interested in product design roles where you design mechanical parts and systems for say a vacuum cleaner, or maybe you're more into process engineering where you design and optimize a particular manufacturing process. Or perhaps you're more into quality engineering and ensuring that parts from suppliers are meeting design specifications. To start off, we'll go on LinkedIn and let's say we're interested in product design. We'll go to the job section and search product design engineer. Go through and look at as many job descriptions as you can. Highlight and list all the skills that you see. This particular product design engineering role is looking for someone knowledgeable in design for manufacturability and assembly, GD&T, material properties, FEA, design of experiments and manufacturing processes like stamping, machining, 3D printing, and injection molding. You'll have a really comprehensive list of skills to develop once you look through hundreds of job descriptions. As someone who has applied to literally thousands of job positions, I learned that the majority of mechanical engineering roles really value design for manufacturability and assembly, GD&T, some type of CAD software such as NX, Creo, SolidWorks, or CATIA, and simulation software such as ANSYS or Abacus. Now, one thing I noticed when searching for mechanical engineering internships is that some companies don't list their opportunities on LinkedIn. So I would highly recommend checking out both LinkedIn and directly on job portals of companies you're interested in to have all options on the table. Apple is a prime example of a company that only lists its job opportunities on its own website. Apple has both manufacturing design as well as product design and materials internships. Now taking the list of skills that you just put together, it's time to build them. For example, you can learn how to CAD and design parts for CNC machining by simply watching tutorials on YouTube. Take it a step further and look through your department's faculty page and email professors for a design-oriented research opportunity. Try not to take it personally if you get no response or if a professor outright rejects you. I speak from experience. Just don't give up and eventually you'll find the right professor. What actually worked for me was exploring professors outside of the mechanical engineering department. For for example, you can look into the faculty of the electrical engineering or physics departments. This is how I ultimately gained experience in CAD design, 3D printing, and machining. I ultimately ended up working for this professor in our school's astronomy department. At the time, he was looking for a mechanical engineering student to help him design prototypes for his patents, as well as cool gadgets that he could use in his physics classes, and I guess I fit the bill. You can also work on your engineering projects if you have 
have any. A good place to start for all engineering students is by getting yourself an Elego starter kit on Amazon, which teaches you all about circuits, programming, motors, and sensors. They also have a very intuitive smart robot car kit that's great for learning how robots work for those of you planning on getting into robotics. I'll drop links to these kits in the description below for any of you who are interested. Now, maybe you don't have any good ideas for personal projects. And instead, you can consider joining an engineering club or design team at your school. Some engineering clubs that we had at our school include Formula Racing, Rocket Propulsion, Mars Rover, Unmanned Aerial Vehicles, and Robotics Club. Almost every university will have some type of engineering club that you can join to pick up valuable skills on your list and meet a lot of fellow engineering students. Now, I don't want you guys to think that the knowledge you learn in class is not important because it is. Without a solid foundation in math, physics, and the core mechanical engineering courses, you won't make it very far into the real world because you need to apply this knowledge coupled with the skills that we mentioned earlier to design, analyze, and optimize products and solve complex problems. If you remember, I did mention earlier that internship experience is one thing that employers look at first in fresh engineering graduates, but you should also know that if your GPA is is subpar, there's a good chance they'll filter out your resume. I like to think of good grades as a prerequisite for getting internships and full-time job opportunities, but of course, it's not the end of the world if you get a B or a C in a class. Instead of stressing about grades and saying, I need to get an A in every class, just try to develop a keen interest in every class that you take and learn the material to the best of your ability. Now, I know better than anyone that the mechanical engineering curriculum is no walk in the park. So there's actually this very effective and interactive method that helped me master all of the difficult engineering concepts and ace my classes. Today's video is sponsored by Brilliant, which is the best platform for hands-on learning in math, physics, and engineering. What makes Brilliant special is the way it comes out with new content every month, ensuring a constant stream of exciting lessons. Whether you're just beginning or looking to build upon existing knowledge, Brilliant provides the flexibility for self-paced learning on your phone, tablet, or computer. I've taken all the math and physics courses on Brilliant and they were all game-changing. Their intuitive lessons and learning paths streamlined the learning process and significantly boosted my information retention compared to traditional lectures. Brilliant was a key player both in my educational journey and job hunt. Their scientific thinking course taught me to think like a true engineer. It provides easy to follow animations and examples to teach key mechanical engineering concepts. Try out everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days using my link brilliant.org slash engineering gone wild listed in the description below. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So now that you have some skills and projects under your belt, the next step is building your resume. Ideally, you'll want to do this during summer vacation right before year two of university. You can always add to it as you build new skills and gain experience. Remember that a resume doesn't have to be fancy. In fact, I like to keep a minimalist style and keep everything as clean as possible. The reason is hiring managers only spend about seven seconds reviewing a resume before deciding whether to keep or scrap it. Your resume should include three sections, education, experience, and skills. At the top, include your name and contact information underneath it. Then create an education section that lists your school, expected year of graduation, and cumulative GPA. If your GPA is below a 3.0, then leave it out. Next is your experience section. You should include engineering related work that you did for projects, research, clubs, and past internships in reverse chronological order. Use as many bullet points as you need and remember not to simply state that you did X, Y, and Z. That's a recipe for disaster and will usually lead to a rejection. You need to quantitatively describe the results that you achieved. Employers want to see evidence of how you can make an impact and help them save money, make money, or improve an aspect of their business. For example, instead of saying design and optimize a rocket engine nozzle, you should say optimize the ratio of throat to exit plane area of a rocket engine nozzle in ANSYS Fluent, improving thrust by 23%. This is the first bullet point. In the second bullet point, you can say apply DFM principles to eliminate undercuts and deep cavities throughout the design, reducing machining cost 
by 40%. Notice both bullet points include what exactly was done, how it was done, and the results. The last part of your resume should be your skills section. Be sure to tailor this section for each job position you apply to, including four to six of the key skills listed in the job description. For example, if you're applying to this chassis mechanical design engineer at Tesla, you can say something along the lines of experience in CAD design with CATIA, CAE analysis with LS Dyna, GDNT, and component validation. Aside from these things, just make sure to keep your resume to a page in length and that every bullet point is concise, all words are spelled correctly, and that there are no grammar mistakes. Now we're going to make sure that you stand out from the crowd. So the next step is to put together a a simple engineering portfolio showcasing relevant projects that you did. Obviously, this step isn't mandatory, but it will boost your chances of getting internships because let's be honest, university students are either too lazy to make one or they don't know that they need one. I didn't have a portfolio when applying to internships and I still got one, but I still highly recommend having one. Document and take pictures of everything you design, including CAD models, drawings, calculations, prototypes, and final parts. Include a brief caption or description for each image. And if you worked on anything confidential, please remember not to include it in your portfolio. With your perfected resume and portfolio, we can finally start applying to internships. Now there are four effective ways to get your resume seen and securing an internship. The first place you should go to is LinkedIn and apply to all the internships that you qualify for. But do not stop there. Make a list of companies that you're interested in. It's likely you'll only know names of bigger companies such as Apple and General Electric. So remember to Google some other mechanical engineering companies and locations that you would be open to working in. For example, I went to university in Boston, so I applied to a lot of internships in Massachusetts like Bose and Applied Materials. Now, once you've compiled this list of companies, usually I recommend having around 50, go on each company's website and apply to all of their internships. Always remember to customize your resume for each job position you apply to. Aside from LinkedIn and company websites, you need to make it a priority to find out when your university's engineering career fair is and go attend it. Universities typically have one every semester and a lot of companies Companies will attend this event to fill their internship and full-time engineering roles. Be sure to dress business professional, bring copies of your resume and portfolio to give to employers, and prepare to ask and answer questions on the spot. If you're lucky, you'll have an internship by the time the career fair is over. However, this usually doesn't happen and companies will reach out to you a few days after the event if they feel like you are a good fit. You should also definitely ask each employer that you chat with for his or or her business card. I like to stand out from the crowd by sending a follow-up email to each employer after the event, thanking them for their time, telling them that I'm still interested in their internship position, and reminding them of my qualifications. By doing this, you're essentially keeping the conversation going and taking initiative, which employers love. The last way to get an internship that is often overlooked is connections. We spend all of this time networking and building connections, so we should be taking taking full advantage of them. Do not be afraid to ask your professors, friends, and family if they know anyone who can refer you or help you get an internship. Because this is exactly how I got my first internship. I knew someone who had a friend who knew the CTO of this company. The crazy thing is this company didn't even hire interns. They were willing to open up a position just for me. As you can imagine, my mind was blown when that happened and that experience alone really really showed me the wonders of networking. So yeah, don't be afraid to put yourself out there and start networking from day one in university. Finally, the last step is preparing for the actual interviews. Now, technically this really isn't the last step because preparation starts from day one and is cumulative. Obviously, most of us will cram right before an interview, which I'm not saying is ineffective, but it definitely makes things more stressful. Because I was guilty of this, I I want you guys to try and stay on top of things, particularly the theory that you learn in class, including mechanics of materials, heat transfer, fluid mechanics, product design, and so on. Periodically go 
back and review your notes from these classes so the material is ingrained in your head. Next, be sure to know your resume inside and out. If the interviewer asks you about a project, such as what type of materials and manufacturing processes did you use to design a test fixture and why you chose those things, you should be able to answer it right away with confidence. You want to convince the interviewer that you're not bluffing and that you know what you're talking about. Two ways that helped me sound way more confident were attending mock interviews at my school center for career development and recording myself answering common interview questions with a friend. Aside from these things, you'll also want to be prepared to answer technical questions. These questions are always the trickiest part of any job interview because you never know what the interviewer is going to throw at you. Mechanical engineering is one of the broadest engineering disciplines out there. So everything including mechanical design, heat transfer, fluid mechanics, instrumentation, solid mechanics, and mechanics of materials are all fair game. To help you guys out, I put together a list of 80 mechanical engineering technical questions that I think are great to know and will hopefully help you land your dream internship or full-time job. All right, so that's the six step strategy that you need to land your dream internship or job. If you're ever feeling discouraged during the job hunting process, always remember that everyone, including myself and all the successful people that you know was rejected at some point in their life. So definitely don't take it personally. When you do get your dream internship or job offer, remember to drop a comment below or message me directly on LinkedIn. It will definitely make my day because my hope is to see every single one of you succeed. Anyways, that's it for today, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my video here where I talk about how to ace any technical interview. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.